shapes and geometric reasoning. Okay, so when we talk about shapes and geometric reasonings, we're talking about, for example, polygons. What are polygons? Polygons are two-dimensional shapes that are with straight lines. Okay, they're two-dimensional shapes with cl uh, closed sides and they all have straight lines. Okay, polygons are also named according to how many sides they have. So a very basic example of that would be a triangle. A triangle is named a triangle because of how many sides it actually has or how many lines it has. And it has one, two, three, three is tri, triangle. Okay, therefore I say polygons are named according to how many sides they have. Okay, what do we know about triangles? We know angles around a point will always add up to 360 degrees. The interior angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, we can also use this to calculate an unknown of an angle or of a triangle if we know two other sides of it. So, for example, um, if I look at this shape, okay, and if I have 90, you guys know this is 90 degrees already, and if up here it says 20 degrees, for us to be able to work out the third angle, because we know the interior adds up to 180 degrees, we will simply work it out as 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 20 degrees, and then we know our unknown, which is x, is therefore equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees is 90 degrees minus 20 degrees will give us 70 degrees. Okay, so we know this is 70 degrees. So guys, that's how we work out the unknown using what we know about the interior angles and the exterior angles. But for example, when we talk about an isosceles triangle, what we already know, what is already given for us when we're working with an isosceles triangle, that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are always equal. So for example, if we were given an angle and we said it is 80 degrees, and in our question it said solve x and y of this isosceles triangle, Already we know given to us is the fact that number one, it's an isosceles triangle. So two, the two base angles of the isosceles will be equal. So we'll say 180 degrees minus 80 degrees, which is equal to 100 degrees. But we are now needing to find two of the set or equal angles. We will divide that by two and it will be 50 degrees. And therefore we will be able to work out that. Okay, so it is not, it's once we work with angles and polygons and um, well, all types of polygons, we know what the given measurement is and from there we can solve for X, Y or whatever it is they want us to solve for. Okay, so like I started off earlier and I said that polygons are named according to their sides. So if we think, for example, about quadrilaterals, Quadrilaterals, also named according to its size, a side, it's a four-sided shape. Um, pentagons, pentagons also five-sided shape. Hexagons, six-sided shape. And so on. So, I mean, we can carry on in heptagon and octagon, but we know that Polygons are named according to how many sides they actually have. Okay, now we know that the interior angles of the polygons should always add up to 180 degrees. Um, this is triangles. You should already know that the angles of a triangle adds up the interior to 180 degrees. Remember guys, when we talk about a regular polygon, when we talk about a regular polygon, um, we are talking about where they have equal sides and equal 
angle. So a regular, a regular polygon have equal sides and equal angles. And that's only for a regular polygon. Okay. Um, okay, there is a gentle formula that you can use when you're working out the sides of the interior, the interior angles of a regular polygon. So the size of each of the interior angles, which is the inside, so we say size size of each interior angle. Okay, so let's draw um, a pentagon. Okay, this may not be the best looking pentagon, guys, so forgive me for the way it starts to look. Oh my goodness, horrible, horrible, horrible. Um, okay, so we know that the formula for this would be will equal to n minus 2 times 180 degrees. Guys, whenever we're working with shapes and angles, please don't forget to add the, the, the degrees because that actually, um, without the degrees, it means just a normal number and that's not what you're working out. You're working at an angle, so please make sure it goes in. Okay, so we're going to say n minus 2, n being the number of sides of the pentagon, uh, minus 2 times 180 degrees. So in this instance, we got one, two, three, four, five sides. So we're going to say five minus two times 180 degrees. Five minus two is three, and three times 180 is going to give me 540. Now we don't want to know about each of that adding up to 140. So what do we do? We divide it by the number of sides. So we say 540 degrees divided by 5 and it will equal to 108 degrees and that's what we are trying to solve for when working out the interior angles. So this will be 180, 100, I mean 108, 108, 108, 108, 108, 108 adding up to the total of 540 degrees in this instance. Okay, so just for us to do a quick recap on some of the ways that ma'am told you that you should be working out. Remember I told you triangles, we already know the interior walls, the interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So if I had a shape like this and I said, this was 90 degrees and this was 50 degrees and I said solve for X. So guys, we know automatically we're going to be saying um, X is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 50 degrees, okay? Then X is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees is 90 degrees minus 50 degrees. X is therefore equal to 40 degrees, so we know. For, and how did we solve that? Because we know the interior angles add up to 180 degrees. Now, Let's do two more of these kind of examples. What about if we did that? Okay. And we said mm, this was 90 degrees. And then that, and that is A. And we said this was 47 degrees. Once again, because we know, we, we know for a fact that the triangles add up, the interior angles add up to 180 degrees. We're going to say A is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 47 degrees. A is therefore equal to 180 degrees minus 90 is going to give us 90 degrees minus 47 is going to equal to, A is going to equal to, sorry. A will therefore equal to 43 degrees. Okay. okay, and then let's do just one more of this. This is 
you should already be able to, if my drawing is any good, be able to know that this is an isosceles triangle because both of these base angles are equal. You can see it by the parallel lines. And if I say 75 degrees on this side and you need to solve C and D. Okay, once again, guys, we start off with what we know. We know we've got one angle that's 75 degrees and we know we're solving for C and D. We have to say 180 degrees um, minus, no, sorry, if we, if this, Sorry guys, I just one step back. I think I went a little bit too fast. If this is going to be 75 degrees, this will automatically be 75 degrees because remember what we said about isosceles triangle. So automatically, if we add these two up, 75 degrees plus 75 degrees, we will be able to find our missing angle because that will add up to 150 degrees. So 180 degrees minus 150 will give us 30 degrees. Okay, so you guys have getting a little bit more familiar with understanding the different types of polygons. I know I've mostly touched on triangles and working out um, how to solve for the missing angle. It's always good, guys, when you are working on stuff like this to always go with what's given, what do you know, what type of shape it is, and then you start working with it from there. Okay, just to do a quick brush up, when we talk about acute triangles, what are we talking about? Okay, a triangle that's, uh, or acute angle, should I say, an acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. Less than 90 degrees, and that we call an acute, acute angle. When we talk about an obtuse angle, we're talking about an angle that is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So greater than 90 degrees, but less than 100, oops, and 80 degrees. Okay, and then finally, when we talk about a reflex, okay, a reflex angle, is greater than 180 but less than 360 degrees okay and of course the 90 degree angle you guys know is a 90 degree angle the 90 degree angle would be on the angle Okay, that's a quick recap of angles. Uh, just quickly going to recap whatever we did this for now. We said that when we're working with, we said these um, polygons are angles that have, that are two dimensional. We said they're two dimensional shapes and they are closed with straight lines. Okay, we said they are. Uh, different types of polygons and they're all named according to the number of sides they have. We spoke about triangles being three-sided and therefore it is called a triangle. We spoke about a quadrilateral having four sides, um, a pentagon having five and a, hex a hexagon having six sides. Um, we also spoke about a regular polygon and we said that with a regular polygon it has equal angles and equal sides. Um, guys, I also reminded you that when you are when you come when when you come to uh, working out whether it's a quadrilateral that adds up the interior is three hundred and sixty degrees, or we're working out with a triangle with angles add up to 180 degrees um, interior and angles add up to 180 degrees. We always go with what's given first before we start to um, solve whatever we are solving for. Okay, that just makes it so much more easier. Um, I wanted to also touch a little bit on circles and angles. 
if you guys would like me to, or is there a different question? Okay. Is there anything that I've taught right now that you guys are stuck on and that you do not know how to do it? Anything about polygons that we worked on, triangles, um, where ma'am showed you how to actually solve for it? Um, is there anything? So everybody understood today's lesson? <laughs>